फर्स्ट गेयर फिफ्टी सिक्स सेकेंड गेयर सेवेंटी फोर फॉल्स न्यूट्रल Third gear, hundred and four. Is this a KTM or a Royal freaking Enfield? Hi guys and welcome, welcome to another vlog. I'm riding this. This is the Royal Enfield Himalayan 450. This is actually the key of the bullet because the key of the Himalayan is right inside. The price range starts at rupees 3.31 lakhs, goes all the way till 3.48 lakhs for the top end variant. There are four variants. There's the base, pass, summit, and the handlebar black. which actually gets black with golden rims but this is the summit which obviously looks quite cool in this sort of a gray and blue treatment the bike is a evolution of the older himalayan in terms of design a lot has definitely changed and the engine is new and it is absolutely unlike a royal enfield motorcycle the engine of this bike so it gets this sort of a curved treatment lot of curved treatment new headlight here of course but if you see it on the inside the circuit board is exposed so yes quality levels could be slightly better this is the low beam this is the high beam royal enfield logo on the inside and everything is led including the indicators of course these are block pattern tires which are more road focused and it gets spoke wheels but you will also get the option of having tubeless tires with this in the future because these are tube type tires however they are exporting tubeless tires with this particular motorcycle with spoke wheels so royal enfield will be the very first motorcycle brand in india to do that because it's awaiting homologation or approval from the authorities Meanwhile this is 1990 21 it gets Showa upside down forks 43 mm Himalayan written here this is actually the guard for the front forks so that it doesn't get dirty when you go off roading this is the reflector there is the horn the bike is having sort of a thump even at idle which is a good thing and obviously the design treatment is more or less the same as before the wheel base has increased by 40 mm and the ground clearance has also increased so yes 230 mm of ground clearance how has the ground clearance increased you please tell me that because now they have gone for a link type mono shock rear suspension which obviously results in the ability to increase the ground clearance the bike definitely looks just like the older himalayan but slightly better because things are more rounder so this is extended because of which this is also extended says royal enfield here if you notice there is no crash guard lot of accessories will be offered with this motorcycle so you can obviously customize to the moon and back now that is the exhaust at the front the disc size is 320 mm at the rear we have got a 270 mm disc and again spoke wheels rear tire is massive 140 section yeah 140 8017 so yes a very big rear tire now on the himalayan the brake light has been new yeah there is no brake light these are the indicators which also double up as the brake light so when i press the brakes there you can see okay along with pressing the brakes i also managed to hit the throttle of this motorcycle pillion seat isn't as comfortable as before the rider seat is definitely comfortable this is more rounded yes the tank is bigger at 17 liters now and you can obviously mount your luggage here it says maximum 7 kgs so slight design tweaks here and there but mechanically this motorcycle has become so much better when compared to before thanks to that engine and obviously you get a sari guard which is mandatory in india okay let's sit on the motorcycle oh my goodness it is really on the taller side so yes seat height is absolutely crazy but we'll come to that in a bit handlebar is wider now yeah it is a wider handlebar and switch gear quality is good not great it could be better but it is decent not triumph level of course clutch is really very 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 heavy round mirrors give you a decent view of what's behind only if you wear a riding jacket you really can't see okay and then it says showa right there so this is for the headlight control this is for the indicator and the horn horn is nice and loud this is to turn off the motorcycle and oh my goodness oh it feels so silent and good once the bike is turned off let me turn off the hazards so yeah that is the switch for the hazard lights it does not get adjustable levers this is to browse through the instrument cluster so it gets a new 4 inch tft instrument cluster which actually says himalayan when you turn it on it's fantastic in terms of the quality it does a full swipe up as well and using buttons here and there actually use this button i can browse through the riding modes and the abs mode so there are four ride modes which we'll come to when we are riding this motorcycle of course now using this switch i can browse through a lot of stuff yeah let me come to the left yeah trip one come on okay it is so badly done na it's very badly done actually fuel consumption voltage engine temperature come on move it's really badly done yeah it's feels so flimsy it's going to break any moment i feel fuel consumption fuel range trip 2 and trip 1 now if i keep this m button pressed here it will change the cluster mode because this is the one for navigation so you can obviously pair your phone and then you see navigation data here which is fantastic and then you can also see call data you can also see music data if you're playing music that is very nicely done yeah this is an amazing tft display wow i love it i absolutely love it but not all the features work with bluetooth with ios right now so it works really well with android now let's just get off this motorcycle 
seat height is 825 mm which is quite a lot so they have made it less accessible firstly the bike is quite big and it's heavy even though they have reduced the weight it is still heavy which means it's not apt for everyone out there 825 mm is the seat height i've actually increased it by 20 mm so using some rubbers when you open it you can actually change the seat height and increase it by 20 mm to 845 mm but don't worry if you are not very tall and most of the people in india are short because obviously the average height is on the shorter side you can actually opt for the lower seat height option as an accessory wherein the padding would be slightly lesser so then it will become more accessible for you it's on the main stand the side stand is made of forged material as well so he has crazy bits in this motorcycle which really very much impresses you in fact the most impressive part is definitely the engine it doesn't feel like a royal enfield engine at all and you really want me to make you hear how it sounds so firstly let's change the cluster mode and now listen to it okay in fact i'm just going to hop on any other royal enfield motorcycle when revved this hard would blow its engine but not this one so let's start riding right away Let's turn on this motorcycle and you're going to be in a complete shock. Here we go. Oh yes, now it is on and off we go. Okay, pegs are center set. My goodness, this bike is quite comfortable. Yeah. For someone as tall as me, definitely I feel super duper comfortable on this motorcycle. And I just noticed that the pegs have this claw. So even the brake pedal has this claw because of which it holds onto your shoe very nicely. And uh, the foot pegs actually have a claw. But over that, there's a rubber which can be removed with an Allen key if you want to go off-road. That also helps. Vibrations seem much lesser when compared to before. This engine is a whole new beast altogether. What has Royal Enfield done? Have they bought an engine from a KDM motorcycle? I kind of feel so because this engine does a lot of new things for Royal Enfield because this is the very first engine from Royal Enfield to be liquid cool. It is the very first engine from Royal Enfield which is actually... <laughs> oh my god, I'm so lost right now because I can't believe I'm riding a Royal Enfield motorcycle which is this smooth and this different. Okay, this is the first Royal Enfield engine which gets DOHC, yes, dual overhead camshaft and it is the first Royal Enfield motorcycle engine which also has an aluminium bore and a forge freaking piston but that's not all, this is the very first Royal Enfield motorcycle which is not long stroke because the stroke is now shorter it's not very short, it's not a short stroke engine so it's an over square engine so this is a 452cc engine known as the Sherpa 450 single cylinder of course and it's a whole new world out there because it's not slow revving, it is quite fast revving my goodness look at that already at 5000 rpm oh, 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 oh. Royal Enfield what have you done what have you done please tell me this bike is a complete different beast altogether if you have ridden the old Himalayan remove that thought and throw it in the dustbin because this is a complete different beast altogether freak man I feel I'm riding a KDM Duke 390 adventure sorry how can Duke and 390 be together see I'm so lost because I can't believe that this is a Royal Enfield motorcycle which feels this fast driving this smooth so we are going to come to a halt let me take a deep breath and I am straight away going to put this mode into performance yeah performance mode on uh, okay and uh, <laughs> what <sighs> and here we go time to launch it and off we go look at that already at 7000 rpm Red line at 8,500 RPM. It reaches 100 km per hour in third gear. It takes around 9 seconds. And my goodness, the mirror is pointing to a place where I can't see. So the mirror mounts are a bit weak. But yes, performance is nice. You have 40 horsepower and 40 Newton meters of torque. It's fast and it's very, like, very fast driving. Obviously, it's not KT. Okay, there's a lot of wind blast. Obviously, it's not KDM levels fast driving engine. But it's still a very fast driving motor here. We are into 6 gear right now. Feels a bit more composed in 6 gear. In fact, when I do 100 km per hour, it's doing 5000 RPM, which means that the best time to cruise or the speed to cruise happens to be around 100, 120 km per hour, but it will hit 150 km per hour. This is the first Royal Enfield motorcycle to have ride by wire technology. Royal Enfield has gone bonkers with this motorcycle now. It doesn't have a quick shifter, it does have a slipper clutch. The clutch is on the heavier side, it's a very heavy clutch. The gearbox is slick shifting though. Yeah, it's very slick shifting, and the motor doesn't have any thump whatsoever. So it's not a very Royal Enfield motor in that regard. The engine is so not like a Royal Enfield motorcycle. These Java guys are just copying Royal Enfield these days, I feel.
that is zero to top speed. Top speed of 150 km per hour. Mirrors pointing to God knows where. So yeah, the mirrors could be better in terms of being sturdy enough to show me what's behind and not show me nothing at all. So yeah, weird mirrors on this motorcycle. But what an engine! What an engine! And I will say it again: what an engine! Very uncharacteristically a Royal Enfield. But with the what an engine also comes to the fact that uh, this doesn't have low end poke at all. Yeah, this is not a long stroke motor. Long stroke motor has the advantage of having a slow revving nature. Doesn't redline at higher RPMs. Doesn't rev fast also, but has good amount of torque and the thump. There is no thump here. Now the engine is actually a stressed member. Of the chassis, yet there are not many vibrations. Obviously, it's a single cylinder, so yes, you can feel the vibrations on the handlebar, on the foot pegs, on the tank as well here, and on the seat too. But it's well contained. But there is no thumb. There's absolutely no thumb. Royal Enfield says what they have done is they have actually uh, replicated the torque curve of the older Himalayan 411 to make sure this also has a similar character. But that's all BS because. Even though the peak torque comes in at 3000 rpm and stays there till 5500 rpm, this has no low end poke at all. It just feels dead lower down. So you have to really rev it. Mid range is fantastic. Top end is very nice. But look at the way this bike is absolutely crazy in terms of the way the motor is able to pull. So I am hoping this engine makes it to a lot of other Royal Enfield motorcycles like the Continental GT 450. <laughs> look, I am making my own motorcycles on right now because I am so impressed by the Himalayan 450. It's a fantastic motorcycle. It's punchy. It has good performance and it is somehow quite fast for a Himalayan. Himalayan doesn't need to be this fast but this one is fast. If I rev this motorcycle right now will the bullet guys get scared the classic 350? Average uh, lagbag 30 ke aas pas, 30. Huh. Yeah, that's shocking. Classic 350 owner will jump from a cliff thinking that oh my goodness can a Royal Enfield Himalayan do all this? Costing is 3.5 lakh. बेचने पे आपको चाहिए तो अभी दूंगा चार लाख में आपको चाहिए तो चार लाख में अभी दूंगा हाँ अभी 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 ले जाओ स्वॉप कर लो I don't want the classic 350 but I am so impressed by the Himalayan that I am ready to sell a bike which is not even mine and here we go clutch 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 less shift happen sometimes sometimes they don't work yeah but I am out of words the the only thing I am not out of right now is the fact that I don't want to keep riding and I'm also out of mirrors because I can't see what's behind. What is this mirror, Rahul? And there's so much wind blast, it's absolutely freaking crazy. Uh, yeah, this is absolutely useless for someone as tall as me. So a lot of changes have been done. In fact, this engine is 10 freaking kgs lighter than before. So the engine is really the gem here. In fact, the chassis is also new. I don't even know the name. I think twin spire frame or whatever. It's a very nice chassis. And this bike also has a USB-C charging socket here, which is sort of a fast charger. What an amazing engine Royal Enfield has really impressed. They are going away from the roots and I'm quite liking it as well. Uh, the only thing which shines on this motorcycle is the brand. Nothing else. Honda is making some bikes these days. What is the point of all that performance when the classic 350 guy is still next to us from signal to signal and off we go. Oh my god. First neutrals really hit you hard. Gearboxes decent but the clutch could be better it's very on the heavier side and the suspension is on the stiffer side as well so yeah they have gone for upside down forks and oh, whatever whatever the tech and all i don't care about i don't care about the specs what i can tell you is the ride isn't as good as the himalayan 411 because this motorcycle feels on the stiffer side it's still compliant enough but not as cushy as say a himalayan 411 himalayan is obviously going to the 411 is obviously going to get discontinued the some stocks are there obviously which you can buy right now but there is the scram 411 which should stay for some time i believe which actually brings me to the fact that this motorcycle is available in five colors 3.31 lakhs all the way to 3.48 lakhs this is not the top end this is the summit meanwhile there is also a top end which is known as the handley black which has black what is this guy on a suicide mission or what so the handley black one is having golden rims and obviously a black color but look at this cool dude nice stuff bro how do your airpods not fly away <laughs> that's something i need to realize because even with a very tight fitting helmet i feel a lot of wind blast okay brakes are so much better there's some noise here <laughs> that's the only problem otherwise the brakes are very nice the himalayan really needed better brakes now because of the 21 inch front wheel it's not a good handler i mean it's not easy to handle this motorcycle 
मोटरसाइकिल दैट मेड दिस मोटरसाइकिल मोर टफ टू राइड सम हाउ बिकॉज लाइक देखो चलाने नहीं आती तो हंटर है ठीक है बिकॉज ऑनेस्टली इट्स अ बिट ऑफ अ हैंडफुल अराउंड द कॉर्नर्स बिकॉज ऑफ सो मच पावर नाउ एंड द ट्वेंटी वन इंच फ्रंट व्हील नॉट बींग द बेस्ट फॉर द रोड ऑफ द रोड इट इज एब्सोलटली फिन नॉर्मल लाइक इट हैज ऑलवेज बीन दिस ए बी एस यू कैन टर्न ऑफ द ए बी एस द रियल ए बी एस यू कैन टर्न ऑफ यू वॉन्ट टू स्लाइड एंड ऑल सो यू कैन डू दैट इन इको मोड और इन परफॉर्मेंस मोड परफॉर्मेंस मोड इज बेटर इन इको मोड ना द परफॉर्मेंस डल्स क्वाइट अ वेट सो दैट समथिंग यू वुड नेवर वॉन्ट टू राइड इन वॉट अ परफॉर्मेंस मैन बट डू नॉट बाई दिस मोटरसाइकिल आई टेल यू बाय because although this bike is fantastic you don't want to be an r&d guy for royal enfield remember when they had launched the original himalayan people's chassis cracked the engine fell off and what not happened i'm not saying that is going to happen with this particular motorcycle but i'm saying give royal enfield some time to iron out the initial issues because there will be initial issues for sure because indian brands obviously do r&d on customers and royal enfield is no different at least that's what we have seen with the himalayan but it's a very promising start and the lesson of we go sorry compass Oh, I can't believe I'm riding a Royal Enfield. Someone pitch me! If you like this vlog, make sure to give the thumbs up. That's the like button, and also subscribe to the channel. Uh, I hate the mirrors on this bike. We need better mirrors, and quality could be better because quality is good, but it's not great. It's not triumph level great. It gets the job done, but doesn't wow you over. So if you like this vlog, make sure to give the thumbs up. That's the like button, and also subscribe to the channel. Why am I talking so fast? Because this Royal Enfield is so fast that I have to keep up with pace. Bye bye. A little longer than a few minutes later. <laughs> Remember I told you that thing before buying a new Himalayan because we are doing the R&D today the bike shut off it refuses to start thankfully i am around an area where i can just leave the motorcycle and walk away but this is not expected from a global product come on royal enfield you can definitely do better i am so stuck right now what the deuce yeah i don't know what's what's happened it just wouldn't turn on quality is not ktm level unfortunately you can see the cluster is just changing colors on its own it's also confused why is the bike not turning on it has this warning happening there there is fuel in this bike bye bye me walking home now barefoot not barefoot empty handed <laughs> bye himalayan bye thank you for disappointing me again getting ktm levels of performance might not be very difficult but getting ktm levels of reliability well that seems impossible for all enfield at the moment at least with the new himalayan now i'm going to ride this bike at least i won't be stranded on the road because on a ktm motorcycle all i need to do is just turn it on and now it is also glitching what is this 10 seconds later and here we go yo baby oh my goodness <laughs> Bye Himalayan get well soon